This is definitely as serious as it gets when it comes to keeping monitors. These are not for the novice keeper. Blue Jayapura, a lemon tree designer animal, and a pure Kofi out. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. My girl Pickles here is looking absolutely incredible. Of course, she is a Biak Green Tree Python, and I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Like I promised yesterday when we picked up that amazing collection of corn snakes from my friends Forrest and Desiree, I mentioned that we were gonna look at some beautiful animals like green tree pythons, and there is nowhere else better than looking at green tree pythons than with my friend Forrest. So he showed me a couple animals that blew me away. We're starting the day off with some amazing animals. You guys know I love green tree pythons and keeping these for over a decade. These are three of the most beautiful ones I've ever had in my collection. We've got a blue Jayapura, a lemon tree designer animal, and a pure Kofiao. So they, they look like that in the wild on Kofiao Island. These guys will always have a special place in my heart. Let's show you guys some more crazy arboreal animals that we've got hiding behind the door here. I tell you what, those green tree pythons are ridiculous. I'm not sure that I'll ever have ones that cool, but hopefully one day. Regardless, next up was a blood python that blew me away. You guys know that I love Sweetie. She is so incredible. But what was amazing about this animal you guys are about to see is the fact that not only is it beautiful, it's absolutely a Enormous, and it still has the same temperament as my girl Sweetie. Oh my gosh. Forrest, this thing is a monster. What the heck? Look at this red blood python. I know, she's such a sweetheart too. Just oh totally tame, amazing color. This has gotta be the biggest red blood python, right? Have you ever seen one bigger? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the biggest, but who knows? Oh my gosh. That is, look at this guys. Oh my gosh. I think, and dog tame. Yeah, absolutely tame. Totally trustworthy. And uh, you can see her spine, you know, a lot of people were uh, griping, saying that it's obese, but you can see it's got a very pronounced spine. This is just a very mature, large bloodline of, of blood python. Wow, that is one impressive animal. I mean, and gorgeous too. Oh my gosh. Tell you what, I showed you guys the other day how absolutely amazing Toothless is doing. I mean, look at how big he is and how incredible he is. And Forrest has been really cranking it out when it comes to monitor lizards. He's got a ton of really cool stuff for sure. But an animal that I've never really actually even seen in person is a tricolored monitor. And Forrest has a really incredible one. So this is the tricolor monitor, Varanus Uanoi. Absolutely an amazing animal. It's, when they call it tricolor, it's actually because of the colors on its tongue. Oh, really? So when it sticks its tongue out. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it also has a Yeah, I thought pretty, it was because of its colors yeah. on its body. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They found this animal on the uh, expedition to Halmahera okay. with Dave and Tracy Barker. Really? And uh, on that expedition, they were actually going to look for a turquoise monitor, but they ended up finding the uh, Morelia tracei, named after Tracy Barker. So this one expedition yielded just some of the most amazing and rare reptiles in the world. This one was certainly the, the most exciting find in, in terms of the color and just what an amazing specimen. It's named after Frank Iwanoi, who was on that uh, expedition with uh, uh, Cameron to Pedman. This tree monitor breeding program is something that's really important to me. These guys are actually going CITES uh, Appendix 1, so they're not going to be able to import these anymore. So being able to establish legal captive stock of these guys is really important and something I'm super passionate about. So we actually have five species of tree monitors. They're all captive born. So I'm really excited about the future of, uh, of working with these guys. This one is Varanus McCrayi, the blue tree monitor. My Abronia actually came from Forrest. He hands down has the best collection of Abronia lizard or alligator lizards in the world. I think there's like 20 something species of Abronia and he has like the majority of them. I mean, a few that he doesn't have, but he has hands down the best collection of these little monkeys for sure. And he's gonna show us some of his favorite ones. Forrest definitely loves Abronia. As a matter of fact, that was like one of the things that first like kind of maybe go like this guy is a serious collector because he's a collecting crazy cool abronia. So show me what you got here, Forrest. Yeah, this is a really rare, really beautiful species of abronia. You know, just absolutely incredible colors. You can see those subocular spines coming off the side of the head there. It's it's stuff like this that got me out of morphs. You know, at first it was just the variety of them and, and how many species there were, and that led into the conservation side of things, and that's really where I'm I'm taking my my future. And it just kind of led me down this path of, of being obsessed with Mexican and Guatemalan herpetoculture and, and herptofauna down there. And there's so many species that are so close to extinction 
and it's all about educating people and stopping the deforestation, educating the locals that they're not poisonous or venomous. That's a big misnomer down there, so they kill them when they see them. And then now, you know, there's there's been some issues with illegal collection for the pet trade. So I'm working with a couple top zookeepers and academics, as well as private breeders and collectors on starting a new nonprofit to raise awareness for these guys and uh, hopefully secure a better future. I don't know much about Abronia, but they are incredible and so polymorphic. Like you said, how, do they know how many species there are yet? It's it's in the high 20s. I think we're approaching 30. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That is so incredible. And, and some of them, they just have such a small range. They might only have one little area of bromeliads up on a cliff and if they go and wipe that you know edge off and and some of those are the only ones that are surviving or those ones that are too hard to reach you know going to be really focusing on conservation and uh, public education and awareness in the future These are two rare lizards also found in some of the same areas as Abronia. This is Baricia ruticollis and Xenosaurus san martinensis. And these are also just really, really rare lizards that I'm excited to be establishing in captivity. And so I'm, I'm gonna be breeding these this coming year. This female's actually gravid, this one might be gravid. So that'll be super exciting to have two new species that really haven't been bred before here in captivity. Ooh, doggy forest. She has gotten so big. Literally, the last time I saw her, she was like almost a baby. Yeah, she's grown so so much. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. I was able to get this as a baby from my friend Joe Satowski, and uh, she's you know came in super tame, already used to human interaction. She's uh, she's definitely developed some claws that aren't so comfortable, but yeah, you know I go in there, I interact with her every day. When I'm gone, I'm always like, you know, first thing I do when I come home is is uh, get Kilo out and interact with her. This is definitely as serious as it gets when it comes to keeping monitors. These are not for the, you know, novice keeper. You want to get an experienced mentor and just not, they're very, very dangerous. But once they get to know you, they can be just the most rewarding captives of, of you know, all the reptiles, I think. Of course, crocodile monitors are kind of known as being like, the most intelligent of lizards. I mean, just look at that thing. Look at the eyes. Look at how it's interacting with you. It knows you so much. Yeah, it, it does. It completely bonds with you. If I were to do this, it would act completely different to me. Trust me. Yeah. These animals are so unbelievably impressive. And look at the length of that tail. Oh my gosh. She is going to be a beast soon. The bond I have with her is like a dog. Like, yep. I just cannot imagine life without Kilo. Oh my gosh, and look at that prehensile tail right there, yep. curling up like that to hang. Oh my gosh. That yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine her as a full grown adult. Just, I can't wait to watch and grow with her and just learn more about this amazing species. You guys know that I could spend days here showing you all the forest and stuff. Uh, we just packed up the corns, which was actually in yesterday's show, but we are heading up. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a peek of forest place. I'm going to come down here pretty soon and do an entire day just looking at all his stuff because it literally it could be a 60 minute video of all his awesome stuff. So down in the comments, let me know if you guys want to see that. I'll definitely get back down here. Plus, we're going to work on some really cool enclosures for his caiman and crocodiles in the next month or so. So uh, plenty more with forest, but uh, for now, we're going to get out of here and get these corns that we actually packed up yesterday which is today uh, because I'm giving you guys a little bit of a jump in time yeah I'm time traveling today regardless uh, I'm gonna say goodbye to those guys and get on the road you know when I go visit places like Forest and Desiree's or any collection for that matter it really inspires me it makes you come up with a bunch of ideas like how can I do things better what do I need to start focusing on what animals would I like to eventually work with Forrest has some amazing things and I tell you what it's just unbelievable his and Desiree's passion for these animals and the fact that he just wants to collect some really incredible specimens help in conservation and just kind of continue to broaden people's education about reptiles. So I came back. I am fired up to be here at the Reptarium. I got a bunch of new ideas that I'm going to be implementing from his place. So I cannot thank him enough for opening his doors. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed it. Which animals did you love the best? Because there were some absolutely gorgeous ones. But as for now, I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog and just wish you guys an amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. Because as always, your support does mean the world to me. And I truly love you guys so much. Can you do me a couple favors before we get out of here? 
can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video. Like I said, comment down below because I always love reading about your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone and I promise I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.